Biology is the study of life, and it has a huge scope on this planet. The atomic level, how atoms bond to each other to form molecules and eventually form cells and tissues and organs and organ systems and all of the different parts of organisms, and then how these organisms interact with one another, another and with their environments to create the biosphere. This is the breadth of biology. It is huge. And so during this course, we'll be diving into each of these different levels, learning about how biology works at that level and how that relates to each of its adjacent levels. Right now is an amazing time, actually, to be studying biology. Some people call it the golden age of biology because biology is all around us. It's in our movies, our magazines. It's in our medicine. Biology really is an important part of who we are on this planet. And so we'll be learning some major themes throughout the semester. One major theme is cells and their DNA. There are two main types of cells on this planet, eukaryotic cells and prokaryotic cells. Eukaryotic cells are generally much larger. They have a nucleus that houses the DNA, and they also have lots of organelles that perform different functions. Prokaryotic cells, on the other hand, are usually much smaller. They do not have a nucleus, but they do have DNA. So this DNA, then, is common to all organisms on this planet. All of life has DNA and uses DNA. And DNA is the molecule that houses the genes. And the genes are the units of inheritance. So these are the information pieces that are passed on from parent to offspring and that tell an organism how to build an arm and how to build an eye and how to build a particular protein. DNA is made up of only four different nucleotides. Later on, we'll discuss these in more detail. For right now, just realize that it is made up of essentially four letters, A, C, T's, and G's. And it's those four letters that creates the diversity of life on this planet that we have. We've taken advantage of our knowledge of DNA, and one subject that we'll learn later on is DNA technology, where we've been able to take the DNA from a bacteria and the DNA from a human, mix them together, for example, and then have a bacteria organism produce the products from a human gene and we'll learn other aspects of DNA technology as well. We'll also be learning about ecology and ecosystems, where we'll be look, looking at the dynamics of how nutrients cycle through the system. We'll look at the dynamics of how energy flows in and out and, and it, within these systems as well. And this will be in a part of the course where we learn about important subjects like climate change and how species are, be, are going extinct. Now, if I were to ask you, just for a moment right now, just think off the top of your head, how many species are alive on this planet? How would you respond? So, give you just a moment to, to look at these options. Well, if you responded anywhere from maybe one to two million, then perhaps you, um, you, were, you were pretty close to the number of known species that we have described on this planet. And that's, right now, the number is about 1.8 million species. However, that's only the species that we've described, so we've actually given a name to, right? But if you look at all of the species that are alive right now on this planet, we don't know for sure, but we estimate there's probably somewhere between 5 and 30 million. So if you answered maybe in the 10 million range, maybe that's what you were thinking. However, if you were to say, okay, well, how many species have lived on this planet at any time? then you need to actually increase that number about a hundred times. Um, basically, what is alive on the planet right now represents less than 1% of what has lived on this planet. 99% of all of life has already gone extinct. So as scientists, one of the things we try to do is catalog this. Now, I'm an entomologist, and so we go and collect insects, curate them, and then put them in these vast collections in order to try to understand and comprehend the diversity of life. And what we've been able to summarize is that life is organized into three main parts, what we call domains. The domain bacteria and the domain archaea are composed of cells that are entirely prokaryotic. The domain eukarya are composed of cells that are eukaryotic. And for example, the domain eukarya 
divi is divided into kingdoms. You may recognize some of the names of these kingdoms, like the plant kingdom, the fungi kingdom, or the animal kingdom. So despite the diversity of life that abounds on this planet, we also see that life is united with these, unit, with these themes. For example, we already said DNA. All of life has DNA. Another example of this unity can be seen in the structures that organisms have. For example, here is a paramecium, a single-celled organism. It's a eukaryotic organism. And on the outside of its cell, they have these, cell, these hair-like structures that are called cilia. Now, you can also find cilia on the inside lining of fallopian tubes in a human being, in a female human being. And these hair-like structures move in a wave-like fashion, and that, that's what brings the egg from the end of the fallopian tube down into the uterus. What's amazing, though, is if you look at the microstructure of the cilium on the outside of a paramecium and the cilium on the inside of the fallopian tube, you see that the structure is exactly the same. So there's this unity within this structure. So one might ask, well, how, does, how can you account for this combination of both unity and diversity, and megadiversity? Well, there is one answer, and one answer that is the best, and that answer is evolution. And I love this th quote from Theodius Dubchansky, where he said that nothing in biology makes sense except in the light of evolution. So if we want to understand biology, we need to understand evolution, and that's why evolution is really going to be the theme that is woven into each of the major units throughout this entire course. In fact, evolution will be what we learn a lot about. Now, of course, when someone says evolution, many people think immediately of Charles Darwin and Origin of Species, and maybe some people think of other things. But evolution in biology is really the best demonstrated, most comprehensive, and longest lasting theory that we have. Evolution is the unifying theme of biology, and it will be a major focus throughout this entire course.